So welcome to Dino's Garage. Um, this is the Triumph Sprint ST1050 project. Um, bike was perfectly good. Um, I think I mentioned in the previous video, apart from a cracked fairing which I repaired. But what I wanted to do was change the initial uh, original forks for upside down higher boosters. Now this isn't just kind of a these are the higher boots of forks by the way. This isn't just a kind of pose factor. I do like these forks. They they look nice. Always liked these sort of gold anodized forks. And with the higher boots of forks you get those gold um, stanchions that go obviously up and down the tubes. Um, but my main reason for changing these forks was for comfort. Now this is a fantastic bike. I'm falling in love with this bike. And you're probably looking at it and going, really? It's it's in pieces um, but um, you have seen this when it's not in pieces and although you think this is a lot of pieces it is not as bad as it looks actually it's really just the seat off the rear unit over there the seat and then I've taken the tank off um, I've changed the air filter whilst I'm at it but what I'm doing is the front fork conversion um, there are some really good tips if you look at the um, sort of Triumph forum on the website um, or if you just Google um, Triumph Sprint ST fork conversion, you'll find a really good link via Google, and then you'll have the link through there. Um, the guy's username through that Triumph Sprint thing, I think it's it's spelled like Decose D E C O S E something something like that Decose. The guy's name's Ken, basically, really good guy, really helpful, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant, helped me again today, thanks Ken. Um, but basically, um, I want to just talk you through what I've been doing. Now, standard forks have been dropped out already, um, but I really kind of need to speak to you really about this tool that, um, I haven't invented this tool, it, it really is just a, a very simple thing. Threaded bar, um, using two wooden blocks. Um, and washers. Now this here is the original sort of bearing race that sits up underneath here. Um, I've now just finished pushing in the new one for tapered bearings to go into there. Um, tapered bearings are on here. That is the uh, Hayabusa triple clamp. Uh, it's got the tapered roller bearing already slid down and um, sort of whacked down onto that so it's seated correctly that will go up into there in case you're wondering the bit there for the steering damp has been cut off because that would in effect foul on the back of here somewhere if I didn't cut it off as it turns now I just want to talk you through this tool basically because what I did is I tapped this into the existing um, or the new replacement um, shell if you like um, to get it to go up into its seated position but if you keep tapping this um, it will lock into place so it's got a thin part and a thick part um, my advice is to make sure you go thick part in first and as you tap it in, so when you look back down through the stem, you can see that thick part and you can very easily, I just use um, a blunt ended chisel, just a crappy old chisel that I used to have that I just blunted off on my um, grinder. That works really well, um, being that it's not sharp, it doesn't damage the inside of the uh, head and you can basically hit it on here and knock this out very easily. Use the thin part to go up inside. This will get wedged inside because obviously it's very, very close tolerance to the existing sort of diameter of the head itself. It'll get wedged and you won't have much to whack onto. Um, and it'll be like trying to get the original out. You just won't have much to hit. So trust me, you want to do it like that and it's dead easy. Um, but what this does is instead of going up underneath here with a club hammer and trying to sort of bash upwards which is very difficult very tiring not easy at all um, I tapped to a point and then I use this to basically compress so this part 
goes on the top on here so that bit sits on the top but the nut right near the top as far as you can go so you can get a socket on there and hold that nut in place um, and then the bottom part obviously goes underneath and then you can see that ring would be compressed between the feather bar pushing up and pushing the other race right up into the seated part where it should go until I basically did it until that wood cracked and I did it as hard as I could the wood cracked and then when I checked it's now that is seated down there you can't really see from here but trust me that is seated into position that that new shell um, yeah that's it really just wanted to talk you through that because it's a bit of a top tip that someone else has talked about I've tried it yeah and it worked brilliantly and using a club hammer to sort of bash upwards and try and tap that into place initially is not easy at all um, so yeah like I say those are the forks um, I'm now going to obviously try and put this into position just to see how it looks up into there with the uh, top bearing on as well um, got a bit of work to do because I need to here um, kind of about here and here think about maybe tapping and making some stops for the actual yoke to stop against also the other problem is that the triple clamp will fail against the expansion tank there so what I need to do is just kind of move that expansion tank out a bit by putting some um, another guy basically showed that he put some nuts and washers on the on this clamp this this bracket um, to move it out so therefore it just moves freely just past that expansion tank and obviously you don't want it to be failing on that making a hole with friction and then eventually the expansion tank sort of leaking all over the floor so yeah those are the things i still got to do and then i'll keep you posted how i go and obviously how it looks when it's finished but hopefully a few more evenings this week and um, i'll be there pretty much with the forks in place and most things sorted um, I'll just sort of talk you through what I've done really so far. So as you can see I've got the upside down front forks on here now. Um, one of the things I had to do with the Sprint the 2005 model was get some spaces made up which were nice and easy. Found a local guy who was a, an engineering company that made these spaces for me so there were no problem at all. Um, thanks Peter for those. Um, so yeah problems I had most of the problem really involved this this expansion bottle because what happens is I don't know if you can see up here you've got these bolts and then these foul as it turns through so what I basically did is took this expansion bottle off warmed it up with a heat gun and and reshaped it because the minimum mark because the minimum mark and the max mark are below this area where I've had to sort of distort it so there's no real problem and issue there that I can see you know it still should fill up and should still come out where it needs to just I've kind of heated it up and almost sort of folded this in so that now does not fail you can just sort of see there it doesn't fail with that expansion bottle um, stops well you've got these bolts on the back of here where the air air inlet scoops for the um, air filter go and I've made some stops by elongating these bolts so the back of the fork sort of hits that stop before the handlebars hit the fairing and then you've got another one there which I've extended as well so you can sort of see that I've used those rubber fairing type connectors that sort of squash in so I get the right adjustment level so again it just taps against that before it taps against the fairing um, what other things did I have to do quite a lot really up top here um, with the ignition barrel, the ignition barrel, I had to drill holes through the original ignition barrel just to take this Suzuki TL1000R head clamp, the top top yoke clamp. Um, also, I had to cut a part, a section off of where the bolt normally goes into the frame for the steering lock, so that's been shortened, so that goes on there straight, but that was relatively simple to be honest. Um, obviously I sprayed this black, so that's a satin black sprayed, so it goes with this Triumph clamp that I bought. I bought this 
clamp and risers got these really cheap off of eBay second hand um, this is like I say the TL Suzuki 1000R head clamp so I've sprayed all of this together so it's all satin black and all sort of bonds together um, handlebars Chinese handlebar which happened to be purely by fluke almost exactly the same colour as the uh, original ST1000 paint so that's not me spraying these that's just a fluke you can find them on eBay check that out um, like I say they're a Chinese handlebar and they go from I think 28 mil down to 22 mil had a bit of trouble with that because I thought that they this clamp which I got first was 28 mil to take a 28 mil but it wasn't so I had to sort of hone that out a little bit that took quite a long time to accept that clamp down so it clamps onto them bars you can see how that sort of clamps down on there now so that's that's all sorted um what else really um got some bar ends that will go into here I'm not going to put the originals on because that would stick out way too far they're just like a sort of a, a mushroom end that i'm going to sort of pop into there to finish that off these are the Oxford heated grips that my wife bought me as a birthday present so I thought I'd fit these on this bike at the same time. So obviously that one goes on the original ST, that's quite difficult to get on there because you have like a serrated sort of bit on the original ST throttle grip. So that took a long time to sort of press up into there. Um, yeah, um, that's the Suzuki. Um, spaces and things that come off the Suzuki originally because the original ST nut which is like a closed off one won't go on there this is a different top thread diameter diameter to the ST everything else is the same but that's you need that from the Suzuki to go on there to clamp that down um, that's kind of it really sorry about all the junk in the background but then um, been doing a lot of work on other things as well um, but yeah I think you can see how how it looks, how it's going to look. Um, I did originally consider doing a naked version of the ST1000, you know, 1050, but I think to do that, you really got to look at the engine and you know, and black the engine out with these. What they didn't do with these is, is put any paint on the main engine casings here. So I think if you're going to have a naked bike, you really got to look at how you're going to clean everything up. You know, it would involve cleaning all this engine up, probably respraying the engine. Um, you've got obviously all the cabling and everything that goes in this part. Really, I wanted to have a bike that was very practical. Still had the speed and capabilities of the uh, standard ST1050 bike. The Sprint ST, that is. Um, but, you know, obviously you have the comfort. And I think with these bars, I'm going to get that. Because as you can see, they're a nice wide bar. Nice comfortable bar. I mean, obviously I can undo these clamps and I can push things forward a little bit or bring them back. I've pretty much set them here. Obviously, another thing I had to do was drill holes into here to take this so it clamps in and, and there's a pin on the on the sort of two shells, if you like, that clamp together into the hole so it's on here and doesn't move and rotate. Um, same with this, I had to drill, don't know if you can see there, I had to drill that and tap a hole into there so that original ST um, fixing fixes onto these bars, same here, drill a hole and clamp that in. But um, I can move those bars slightly forward or slightly back if I want to. I think they might be set pretty much how I'm going to want them. Um, yeah, that's kind of it really, that's where I'm at at the moment. I think the only thing I've got, to, got left to do, uh, this is the other consideration of course, if you're ever thinking about making a naked bike, you've got all of these. Um, relays here that you're going to have to put somewhere else. Uh, you've got this voltage regulator that you're probably going to have to put back in here somewhere underneath the seat. Um, it's, not, it's not it's not an untidy engine this side but I think as a naked bike it would start to look a bit untidy. So there we go. I think it looks very nice with the Hayabusa the gold forks. Sets off well against the black. I think the black of the Triumph um, calipers look nice. These are the standard calipers. These bolt exactly straight in to the bottoms of these legs, purely by fluke, I guess. Triumph calipers bolt straight onto the bottom of the Suzuki legs. You don't have to do anything to do that. Um, what I will have to do, obviously, is think about how I'm going to put the Triumph mudguard on, because I do want the Triumph mudguard on there. So I've got this bracket and this 
Um, I'm probably going to have to make some sort of metal brackets on the inside that bring the fixing into place to line up with these. So a little bit of sort of home engineering if you like to do there as well to sort that Thanks out. Thanks for watching Dino's Garage. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll be showing you these videos, updating some of these videos and of course I'll be adding to some of these along the way.